I've reviewed over a hundred monitors, and yet I've never actually talked through how to set one up, so let's do that. The first thing when setting up a monitor is to physically set up the monitor. Most monitors these days come in three parts, the panel, the stand, and the foot. You can use the thumb screw to attach the foot to the stand, then usually you can just clip the panel onto the stand as they're almost always toolless. Occasionally you might need to use a screwdriver depending on the model, but that is pretty rare. If you ever want to remove the panel on a toolless monitor, there's normally a button or a little pull tab that you lift and then lift the monitor up from the bottom edge and then up off of the sort of teeth at the top of the, the stand's panel. But with the monitor assembled, you can then adjust the height, tilt and swivel to suit your position. Ideally, the monitor will be pretty much at your eye line so you don't have to tilt your neck forwards to look down onto the monitor. Next are the connections. Power is the most obvious one, although some monitors actually have a dedicated power switch next to the power input that you will need to make sure is switched on. Then you'll need a display cable. Depending on what device you're connecting, you might use HDMI or display ports, or if you're using an older monitor or an older system, you might use things like DVI or VGA. Now, personally, if you're using your monitor with a PC, I would recommend using display ports where possible. It's generally more supported and stable for things like adaptive sync. For consoles, you generally don't have much of a choice but to use HDMI. If your monitor has a USB hub like this one, you might want to connect the downlink cable. That's normally a USB B port and the cable should come in the box. With your system running and connected, you'll then want to head to the on-screen menu to start tweaking some of the settings. The biggest one is anything called overdrive or response times because that is what turns your panel from a, a slow mush of colours to a sharp and responsive gaming powerhouse. As a general rule, the second highest option, which is often called medium, is normally the best balance or the best one to choose for gaming. It is always good to check reviews for your monitor though, or maybe by the time you watch this video, you'll be able to use my new response times database site. Well, if that is available, I'll leave a link to it as soon as it's live at the top of the description so you can go and check that out. One mode I personally like to avoid is the backlight strobing modes. They often get called things like, well, AOC calls them MBR, ASUS calls it ELMB, Gigabyte calls it AIM stabilizer, and some just call it ULMB. Basically, it turns the backlight off for all but the first millisecond of a new frame. It ends up dimming your display quite a bit since there's now, there's now generally about seven times less light being emitted, and personally it gives me headaches almost instantly. You'll often find that you can't enable MBR, motion blur reduction, that sort of thing, with adaptive sync at the same time, which is a setting that I would highly recommend you use instead. It makes your gaming experience, or adaptive sync makes your gaming experience a lot better thanks to syncing when your display shows a new frame once your graphics card or console has actually drawn it and sent it, so you don't get any torn frames showing up on screen. You might also have a setting for low input lag. If you do have that, definitely enable it. Your monitor likely has game modes. These generally end up being more like color profiles than any game specific settings. It doesn't hurt to use them for sure, although often the standard mode ends up being the most color accurate and in my experience normally offers the best all round usage. You might also get some gaming features though, like FPS counters, on-screen crosshairs, or if you bought an NVIDIA Reflex monitor, a latency analyzer too. The FPS sort of counter can be interesting, although I would argue that the majority of the time the in-game ones are better as they actually reflect what FPS your game is running at instead of just what FPS your monitor is seeing, which will obviously cap at your refresh rate. Crosshairs can be useful, although in pro leagues I think they're kind of considered cheating, so I'll leave that one up to you. You may also want to adjust the brightness, contrast, and gamma settings to suit your environment. 
in a brighter room, you want to increase the display's brightness to a comfortable level, but if you're mostly using it in the dark, a much lower brightness is almost always better. Gamma settings basically change the or shift the, the curve of how bright darker colors are and how bright or how dark lighter colors are. Uh, the default setting is normally around gamma 2.2, which is generally the best, although feel free to adjust it to what looks best to you. The same goes for the color settings, like the color temperature and any color balancing you might want to do. Most monitors that I test these days generally don't need that much tweaking in terms of their, their color. The warm profile is normally the default and normally offers the best or the most true to life option. You might also have HDR mode. Again, this is something that I personally tend to leave off as most displays that aren't OLEDs generally don't offer a good HDR experience. Now there are a few mostly pretty high end exceptions but your average gaming display that has an IPS panel and no full array local dimming and like 300 nits of peak brightness, enabling HDR in any form almost always just makes everything look worse, at least in my opinion. Still, the option is often there if you fancy using it, especially in conjunction with the Windows HDR settings as well. Now, something that I've seen become more common recently is monitors that use the USB hub cable and software in Windows to control the monitor's on-screen settings. A few different brands offer it, and it is actually pretty handy. AOC's G menu here can control the majority of settings that you'd find in the on-screen menu, everything from the overdrive settings to color temperature and brightness. While you don't tend to tweak those settings all that regularly, it is quite nice to have it available to control via software. There are a few things that you'll definitely want to do in Windows too, like making sure your monitor is set to run at its full resolution and refresh rate. Open up the Windows display settings and set the correct resolution if it hasn't done it already, and then scroll down to the advanced display settings option. From there, you should have a drop down to change your refresh rate to its maximum. You can also check that adaptive sync is enabled in your graphics driver. Right click on your desktop and you should have an option for either Nvidia control panel or AMD Radeon settings. With an NVIDIA card, you just need to go to the Setup G-Sync option in the menu on the left and then enable it for your monitor. I prefer leaving it or setting it to both full screen and windowed modes. And on an AMD card, you just click Display and then enable FreeSync as the first option there. If you have an AMD GPU, you might also want to enable Radeon Anti-Lag, a useful tool in reducing input lag in games. NVIDIA's alternative, Reflex, is built into the games themselves, so you'll need to enable those on a per game basis, depending on what games actually support those features. So I think that will do for now, but if you have any of your own tips that you think people should know about, definitely drop them in a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this one, including plenty more monitor reviews and a load of other stuff, then feel free to hit the subscribe button and check out the bell notification icon. Check out plenty of other videos on the end cards when they pop up in a second, including the review of this bad boy, the AOC AG275QZ. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it. If you want to support the channel, you can do so through Patreon, YouTube, or uh, merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one. You can also pick up an open source response time tool if you happen to want to test monitors yourself. And you can also check out the rest of the links in the description down below as well. If you're buying from places like Overclocks UK, there's a link for that down there as well. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.